Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another video. I'm Brett Papa, and today, let's just freaking keep down the nasty train. We're gonna do nasty blues licks, major pentatonic edition. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, major pentatonic? Can that sound nasty? Yeah. Think about Clapton, like uh, Crossroads, or Gary Moore, or Philip Sace, Jeff Healy, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Hendrix, Van Halen, uh, Neil Sean, um, on and on and on and on. All ripping players who sound just as nasty playing major licks as they do minor. Now, the other two videos we did in the Nasty Blues Licks series were more catered towards using minor pentatonic and mixing major and minor pentatonic through the lens of adding major into the minor framework. And today we're going to mix all that up. But before we carry on, there is going to be 15 of these available. It's a 50% discount on the yearly membership, which I've never done before. For the first 15 people, you'll get the membership at brettpapa.com for 50% off. And if you miss that, then there'll still be an awesome discount for you in the links down below. That includes all my courses, Hendrix Unleashed, Caged Unleashed, all the blues soloing secrets, stash licks, all that stuff, Tim Pierce's courses. There's also other courses being added as well. Point being that I'm gonna cover a lot of ground in this lesson today, but all that's covered in way more depth inside the membership and in the courses. And then you get jam tracks and tabs and all of that stuff to help you apply what we're about to learn in a real world scenario over lots of different tracks and styles and all that kind of stuff. So check that out down in the links below. Again, 15 memberships at half off. Okay, so also, oh my God, Frank Marino. <laughs> Look up right now, just stop what you're doing. Well, watch this video if you want. And then after the video, Frank Marino, I think it's the album's Live Alive, listen to Red House and tell me that isn't some of the most terrifying pentatonic playing mixed with jazz. And I know when I say jazz, like you're like, jazz? Like a lot of you people are like, pff, pff, what do I want? Like you just up immediately picture a martini and a little cigarette on one of those long sticks and like over sophisticated egotistical people thinking they know everything about everything. <laughs> That's not true, by the way. I know plenty of great jazz people, but imagine a biker going in there with a giant Fu Manchu and just be slapping all of those people and they're ripping their guitar off and then just doing the most terrifying blues rock jazz playing you've ever heard. You gotta hear it. Red House, Frank Marino. You'll thank me later. And then go listen to King B off the other live album he has and Johnny Be Good. Holy nasty blues playing. It's just terrifying. Okay, so Frank Marino. Now, say we have a progression like. God, I love this little amp. Tone brought to you by Divided by 13, CJ11, Nordvang. 83 drive on the Klon side and this Tuttle Strat Lawler Specials and a 64 Lawler. Okay, everybody always asks, so there you go. Now, first of all, if we're doing G, I'm gonna play G because it's also the same notes as E minor pentatonic, right? So G major pentatonic and E minor pentatonic are the exact same notes. So to get nasty, you got to know how to take what you already know, some licks that you already know, and morph them into being able to resolve in the correct spots. And what I mean by that is since they share the same notes, I think the default we're all going to have is I'm just going to play E minor licks and it's going to work. Mm -hmm ish, but not quite. If you really want to go all the way, we got to see where those G chord tones are or the notes of, of those chords that we just played are inside of that G major pentatonic scale. Let me give you a quick example. So if I played an E minor chord and then played E minor pentatonic,
sound sad, minory, the whole shebang, right? But if I play those exact same notes, but just resolved more to a G chord tone, then it sounds like G major pentatonic. Right, so you see the difference? It sounds like major now instead of minor, even though there's exact same notes. So keep in mind, if you know the E minor pentatonic scale already, all five positions, which you should know, the courses down below will help you with that if you don't, but you need to know how to resolve. You can use those licks, those E minor pentatonic licks, but you gotta resolve to the right notes to make it sound like G major. So I can take a lick like. <laughs> would be E minor, but I can do that same kind of thing. And make it more major sounding, right? Right, because I'm hitting a couple of the notes of a G chord. So you can use those standard stock E minor licks, but you gotta resolve to one of the tones in the chords that we're using. And eventually, hopefully, you can create your whole other bag of licks that are just major licks, right? You get all the cool like. <laughs> Right, and it's like, cool, they're killer major pentatonic licks. And we're gonna show you how to kind of toughen up typical pentatonic licks that are in G major. So, right off the bat. We could take that chord progression and I could hit all those chords. Then we have F. And just play straight G major pentatonic, and that's gonna sound cool, and it's gonna work, and I hit every, you know, chord in that progression. I hit at least one chord tone from the three notes in each of those chords, right? And I did that by looking at, right? This is an E-shaped G chord, so I hit the third and the fifth. And then I hit the third of the F chord. Third of the C chord. And then back to the root of the G. Okay? All using straight pentatonic licks. Now I can toughen that up by doing a couple of things. If I know my positions. One of the things that's cool in minor pentatonic licks is adding the flat five. Now it's not called the flat five in major pentatonic, but the same idea is this note. Okay, so we can automatically toughen up our licks. Now I can do that same move, right? Because that note is right here. So when I go down into position two, and then back to G, right? So. So you're just adding one note and auto automatically it's like, ooh, that's kind of cool, right? So think of it, same thing as the flat five, but it's not the flat five, it's actually like adding a minor third to a G major scale. Right, G minor chord. 
right? So automatically sounds more tough. Now, another cool thing you can do is take these notes right here and fill in the gap. So that would be position two. Right, so I can be like. Right, just adding chromatic passing tones. Check this out. Okay, so I filled in the gaps here. So. Now what you could do is you can figure out what these notes are, right? So like D, E flat, E, and anywhere there's a D, E flat, E, you could, you know, fill in those gaps and use that same lick, right? So if we come to like, it's... in a different position. There's that. All right, and... So it's being able to just kind of like take those three notes and like, oh, where, where are the other ones? Those same three notes on the fretboard all over inside those pentatonic shapes, because that's gonna allow you to shift around and move to different spots using the same notes and the same lick, but because you're using it in a different way in a different spot on the neck with the different thicknesses of strings and all that kind of stuff, you're gonna realize, oh, it sounds different, right? And you're gonna realize a lot of the licks that you liked that were like these big, long, epic, you know, from here to here, passages in the solos that we love, a lot of them are repeated notes. It's just moving its way up the fretboard through different positions. So step one would just be to take those simple and just those simple tweaks. And then here, right? So that would be A, B flat, B. Now, step two would, and this really is kind of right in with step one, but I figured I would just show you that because that's gonna be the easiest thing to kind of right off the bat get. I'm just showing you two different spots you can add notes. Now remember I went like this. So when you're in that position one, all that stuff, even though it kind of sounds like abrasive, when you start using that quickly, as a way to kind of build speed and twist the ear, like Brad Paisley, my God in heaven. Listen to some of the runs he does and the notes, it's like when you, when you slow it down and you try to like figure out the solos, you're like, is that the right note? It's not even in the scale, it doesn't even sound right, but it works, right? So break some rules, experiment on, you know, taking a scale tone and just moving it up or down a fret from the note that's supposed to be, and try just blow, don't land on it, just blow by using one of those notes and you're gonna automatically start to get this kind of like, what was that cool note thing happening, right? So modify the scale, bend it, tweak it, fill in the gaps. I would say that's step one. Step two that's even more important than that would be to take those chords and find them inside that G major pentatonic scale. So, right, so here, shape one. 
Well, that shape one of G major pentatonic contains the G shape. And that's gonna show you what notes work over that G chord. Right, I'm just, I'm thinking about a G chord inside that shape one of the pentatonics. And how I can resolve to those with using a lick, but making sure that the dynamics and the, the resolution points are gonna land on one of those tones of that G chord. Now check this out, I can also hit a note of the F chord in that scale, the third, but two of the notes aren't in the pentatonic scale, right? So this one and this one, right? I say two of the notes, but two spots where you could use this note are not in that scale. And then also, all those notes are not in the G major pentatonic scale, right? So, so that's where the cool thing about learning kind of the street guide to the modes comes in. If you just can figure out is this song in major or minor pentatonic? And then you can start to see the chords inside those. Then you're gonna realize, oh, those other notes, there's other notes there. Well, those actually are gonna make a scale. So like this particular song, you could play G Mixolydian. Now I know that that's like, ooh, it's those Greek mode names again. That's so like, the I don't know in mode brain kicks and it's like, ah! it's not that scary. You're actually just, filling in the notes of the chords inside the framework of the pentatonic scale and giving yourself more options because the notes of those chords are in there, so might as well use them, right? So that's another way you can start to add some pizzazz to your playing. And the cool thing about knowing different chord shapes like from the cage system is it's gonna give you arpeggios that you can kind of mess with your pentatonics, you know? So like you have this G chord. So you can start putting those shapes in there. Or like if I'm gonna... Right, that's kind of an arpeggio. Now if I can use that and see those other notes, when I did an arpeggio like... And then I had that F, right? Well, I'm gonna know that, oh, okay, there's an F chord here, right? So I got, right? And then I got that C. Right, and now I can, I'm right here, which would be. But this note from my C chord isn't in there, right? But I can use it. And then I use my other passing tones to kind of toughen up that otherwise very melodic kind of like flowery phrase, right? It all sounds happy and... I'm doing in that kind of phrasing and I'll, and I'll show you some of that but I'm just taking that G major pentatonic scale and I'm thinking oh there's an F chord oh there's a note of a C chord oh there's a note of a G chord and I'm adding it right so suddenly you might be in a position like here here's your G, your G chord here's your F chord Right, that's an A shape of an F chord. This is all in the cage system. Cage Unleashed, it's all part of that membership. So check that out. So we got, and then C. So you can come in, add the tough note.
Right? That's a cool run. Joe Walsh and Don Felder, too. My God, talk about textbook. Just killer, nasty blues playing, right? It's just as melodic, the bending that those guys do, um, and the just the note choice is just, it's simple phrasing, but the best simple phrasing you're ever gonna hear. It's just perfection as far as blues rock phrasing goes. All of that stuff. I mean, think Hotel California. That's a great example of, you know, knowing how to add those chord tones in there. If you look at the progression from Hotel California, there's a couple oddball chords in there. Most of the solo is basically pentatonic licks or kind of arpeggio licks, but there's that one chord in there. It's like, ooh, that's almost kind of like harmonic minor sounding. And it's just adding one note to your pentatonic scale, but hitting that note at the right time that really gives it that like, ooh, what was that, right? Simple, you're just seeing those chord shapes inside a pentatonic framework, right? So that note, G, right? I could go, because there's a G chord here too, right? I'm filling in those gaps, remember? Now, the F chord's coming up. I can still stick in this framework, but then hit that note, part of the F chord. There's the third of the F chord. And then that C chord. And then back. And then over that C chord, it's a really cool way to make it nasty is you can start to use minor pentatonic because look at the C chord. Look at all these notes. That fits right inside that G minor pentatonic scale. So you could be all happy-go-lucky G major. Right, so I borrowed the notes from that C chord. And then started pulling it back into G, right? The next chord coming up. That's also a note from the C chord. And then into a note from the G chord, right? Right, that's just. to the F. And then we got. And then. And that's bringing it back over that C chord, right? We got a C here. And I'm kind of playing off that C chord tone. But I also have a G chord right here. And then here's a note from that C chord. And then my major third. And then, right, because here's that G minor pentatonic. So that's another way is, is mixing in minor, like especially over that C chord, super cool because it just basically outlines that, you know. Now the other thing we can do is start to see, oh, 
that Mixolydian scale is actually starting to be built. Now check this out. And then when you add the passing tones and all that other stuff all together, throw in the minor over that C, you're gonna start to have more options than you're gonna know what to do with. And it's endless what you can do. And that's the whole thing where like playing over jam tracks and all that stuff, like all the stuff that's in the membership, you're gonna be able to use that in a real world scenario and actually really start to hone in your improvisation skills because you're gonna be paying attention to how to play over chord changes and chord progressions, but you're gonna have some tricks up your sleeve. You're gonna have that feel, those bends, all that stuff we talked about in the previous Nasty Blues Licks videos, but now we got major and minor starting to develop, which another thing about the membership is there's a major and minor pentatonic course coming out in like a month. And I think 50 videos from that course are already in the membership. So you can start to really dive into seeing how mixing major and minor like we're doing right now really works. Okay, so check it out. Let's take one scale. Position four, major pentatonic. Where are our chords? D shape of the G chord. Now we got this F chord. Okay, so right off the bat, we added a couple notes, right? Now, if I added that C chord in there, Okay, so we're starting to get all these extra notes. Oops. The reason this note didn't work is because the F is what we're shooting for, and that F is right here, right? So it's building these. And all that is, is seeing where the G major pentatonic scales are. Right, and adding those other chord tones in there. So we got. Because of that F, you know, the real chord is, or the real scale shape is just like this. But. Right? From our G. So we got. So then you can start to add those. Or make it nasty. So I'm just adding all that stuff. If I moved up, right, to shape five. Right? F. C. Right, again.
those three things. I took a basic G major pentatonic. I added some passing tones. Step two. Step three, the most important was I saw where the rest of the chord tones from the progression we were playing over, any of the notes that weren't in the G major pentatonic, you know, scale, I made sure to add those other chord tones too, which gave me a mode, which was the mixolydian mode. So I used those. And then I also learned that over that C chord, it basically covered a G major or G minor rather pentatonic chord shape, right? Right here, I was able to use and being able to pepper in that minor pentatonic inside the major shapes. And so those are three ways to totally nasty up any flowery major pentatonic runs. Now there's a time and a place to keep everything beautiful. But you know, if you're the type of guy that needs like, okay, there's a flower, but like if you ripped a couple petals off, that flower would have some mystery to it. Like it's been through some high winds. It's a freaking survivor. <laughs> that would be a way to nasty up your flower, right? And so we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're morphing it into our melodies and how can we make stuff sound tough? Cause I'm a fan of tough licks. Now again, boys and girls, Frank Marino, oh my God. Neil Sean, departure. Wow. Wow. Any way you want it. Killer. Major pentatonic phrasing, right? Uh, you got Philip Sace, another one of the like newer, just shredding or Bonamassa guys that can really like toughen up that kind of stuff. Trower, Stevie Ray Vaughan has some great kind of happier sounding blues licks that are just amazing. Uh, there's Hendrix, Red House is a perfect example of mixing major and minor together. Clapton would be like Crossroads or Badge. Angus, my God. Angus is the king of this style. There's, you know, Shook Me All Night Long, stuff like that. Go listen to all those tunes and those artists and you'll really like start to hear, oh, that's what they're doing. That's what that note is that's not in the scale. Oh, it's just a, one of the chord tones that he's hitting inside of his blues scale. And that's the secret, folks, to nastying up everything. Know some passing tones, know how to see those chords, and know your basic major and minor pentatonic shapes. You'll be on your way. Now, again, if you want to support the cause, all my equipment is listed below. I have a Sweetwater link. That's where you can get a majority of all the gear I use in my studio. I have also, I make a little bit of money off those affiliate links, but like the Divided by 13, the Tuttle Guitar, Jeffson, all that stuff, I make no money whatsoever on, but those links are down below. So that's all the gear I use is listed down below. If you really want to support the cause, 15 spots for that 50% off the yearly membership. I think there's like almost 900 videos in there now. So you will definitely be covered with all this stuff in spades and have tabs and jam tracks and everything you're ever going to need to get better on guitar down in the membership at brettpapa.com. Other than that, you guys are amazing. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the new videos come out. You guys are amazing. We'll catch you next time.